You know, God has been showing us a lot of these wonderful things these last days. He's been telling us to do certain things concerning this body, but actually for his whole body. God's not respecter of persons. What has he first said? He said to slow down, didn't he? Now, I, I asked the Lord, give me more detail. And he said, when you slow down, you're able to pick up the rhythm I, of my spirit. But when you always feel like you're in a hurry, which, which society and the world does, kind of makes us feel like we always have to hurry up and just stand in line. You see, that, I think that's not of God at all. I think we have to settle down just a little bit, right? Slow down. Why? Because we don't want to miss God's rhythm and how he lays out our life. Now, the Bible says that you and I have a race to run. You don't have my race. And, I, and BJ, I don't have your race. We each have our own race to run. Now, we think of race as com competition against someone. We don't run against each other. We run against our flesh. How so, Pastor Kerry? Your flesh wants to sit. It wants to not very, do very much, and it wants to have its own way. Of course, you don't have to say amen. And your spirit now has God in it. It wants to go. Can you say amen? Go. And it, there's this excitement to follow God. Say amen. But see, we have a wrestling going on in our heart. One wants to sit, one says to go. So we want to submit ourselves every day to God so he can do what with our body? He can kill it. That's not, we haven't even got to the renewing part. Somehow over, overnight, from the time you went to bed to the time you woke up, your body was laying in a coma-like sleep, hopefully. And even because, now listen carefully, because there's sin in it. So when we come, come in the morning, refresh ourselves like a shower, we ask God to crucify our flesh. Can you say amen? So it doesn't get in the way of our learning. And here, this is a learning center, not only a church, wonderful congregation, but a place to learn and grow. The only thing that can hinder you and I from growing is who? Yeah, our flesh. That's the only thing. So God says, present yourself to me. Let me tune you up, adjust you, lay your body down so I can crucify it so that when you need it, it will serve you and it won't serve itself. How many have ever wrestled between wanting to do something for God and your flesh just didn't want to do it? Come on, raise your hand with me. Yeah. Though I want to do good, I found something working the other way. Well, that's normal. So we have to present our body because of the sin factor before God so he can help us get it under control. Say under control. Because our body is under whose control? Not God. Oh, no. No, he's under your control. Yeah. It, it, we want to say God, but no, it's under our control. So we have to present our body so God can help us. I can't quit this or do this without God's help. Do you remember the two scriptures that says, without God, it's good to see you, Sean. Amen. Without God, I can do nothing. How many here remember that one? Yes. All right. So breathe. But see, he says also, we are nothing without God who created us. So that keeps us humble, depending upon God so he can guide and direct our life so that we don't make so many mistakes. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God I'm not a mistake. Are you with me? So here at this kind of training center, and those of you, come, I know a lot of you are watching, so I don't know if you're receiving healing or what, but I know that many of you are watching and you tune in regularly. So I want you to understand there's a key. When we come and present ourselves to God, we come under the kingdom's authority. Do you understand that? There was a kingdom of darkness in the earth. And it, you can't pr probably see it, but we can see it played out in the lives of others. You know, doing wrong and stuff. That's the mystery of iniquity. That's the kingdom of darkness working on people. But we are in the kingdom of light. Can you say amen? So we're under whose command? God's. Because we put ourselves daily and our body daily under whose command? God, you have to present yourself. You can't automatically think, 
God's got this and you haven't presented it to him. Listen, if I don't toss you the ball, you don't got it. If you don't toss me the ball, I don't get it. You see, so it's not what we understand to be the truth. It's what, well, I've got some great nuggets for you. What's what God downloads in our heart by the spirit that we have an, that truth we own. So let's get into this. Now, I told you I was going to try something new, right? Guess what? My wife is going to allow me to use her tablet. I've stepped up a, a moment or two. And so reading from the sheet and all that, this is going to be new for me. So if I look like I'm new to the tablet, I am. So you guys go ahead and pray. I'm going to take a real sip. My throat's dry from singing. Oh, I love you guys very much. You ready to get in the Word? So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. It is God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Father, we still believe that God is, you are the ultimate. And you're the most authoritative. And Lord, until we put you in charge of our life, you're not in charge of our life. And daily as we present ourselves to that charge, you help cause our life to be normal and stable. Lord, present the word to you, open our eyes, help us to hear it, download it into our spirit, help the eyes of our understanding to catch it, and Lord, begin to bleed the word of God by revelation out through the week, so we get chunks of it, it becomes reality, because we are your children, these are your congregation, we bless them now in Jesus' name, and everyone said, and here I go, I'm opening the tablet, ba-boom, wow, we're going to, we've been doing a series called Reigning in life in Christ. We are supposed to reign in Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus won. Did you, do you believe that? Yeah. Jesus died, rose again, and said it is finished. He won. So here's what Christians we get deceived in. We think we have to win. We think we have to do these things. It's a ploy. You're being played. No, you won in Christ. Say amen. Amen. The key is, now listen carefully, the key is stepping back, sitting down in God's authority, and speaking, praying, and acting on the word. That becomes you and God working as a team. Unbeatable you become. Now, oftentimes, we want it done. We go out there and do it. We're, God's way behind us somewhere, and we're out into getting shot land. We need to stay within our hedge of protection Walk within the armor of God. And so today I'm just going to give you a few more nuggets of how to do it. What Lyndon and I are all about in this, this ministry here is to give you what you might need to practice so that your life and your walk becomes what God promised it will be. It's the doing of the word and not acknowledging only. The devils believe in God. We have to do the word to make it difference. We have to walk in the kingdom to bring the authority. Can you say amen? And we have to come under the king for that to happen. If any man received Jesus, God gave them the authority to become the children of God. John 1, 12. 
All right. So this one's called, this little sub-message is called Built Up a Spiritual House. Let me uh, read. We're going to turn and read our scripture in a minute, but let me read my paragraph. So here we go. Off the tablet. Blessings to you. Everyone say blessings. You're my family. So today we are going to share more on how God is building an unshakable kingdom in the earth. And how he is, listen to this, downloading and building the same kingdom within our hearts. God does this by his word. But we must search the word for God's wisdom. Church, we have his word to give us the help and, listen, the hope we need. Now, hope is a picture, okay? And the listen, hope is a picture. So we see a picture from the word of God so our faith can bring substance to the very things we hope for or see. This is why a believer must lift their eyes and put them upon Jesus and his word so we can see and develop and the kingdom can develop within us. And that authority comes natural flow instead of you trying to take authority over everything. That's beating like in the flesh. Listen, you can sit in the presence of God and speak the word over your family and the word, which is Jesus, will automatically be a smart bomb, go in and get the details. You send him. God has to have you send him because he doesn't invite himself. That's why we have not because we... Oh, don't ever forget that principle. You had to ask God in before he came in. He didn't jump on you. No, you have to ask him in. You have to continue to ask him every day so he refreshes you. I don't know about you, but I like a good refreshing shower every day if I can have it. Amen? Maybe not every day. But when you're in there, you're refreshed. Can you say amen? And then some of you more daring ones, because I have a false leg, I have to get somebody help me out of the tub. But you can get in the tub and soak. Now, what we don't see and what we need to know is God has placed you within his son, Jesus. He's placed his son within you. Then he's taken you and put you within a kingdom full authority, fully equipped. But because we have done it all ourselves, all the time. Now, this is kind of funny. We're all going to have fun with this. I turned my life over to the Lord. How many know I did? But you know what? When, when we turn our life over to the Lord, we must be careful we don't take it back. Because we, we can do that. Come on. That's why, again, the presenting of your body to be crucified daily so we don't start taking things back because that's the deception God doesn't want us involved in. Okay. All right. So it goes on further. Listen. He can develop that kingdom within us. Now, remember, the Holy Spirit came and brought with him the kingdom of heaven. And with this kingdom, it came at Pentecost. I got to flip my finger. This is new. Came all the power and the authority of Almighty God. Do you know that? So on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, the kingdom came with it. All the authority, all the power of Almighty God. Why, Pastor Kerry? To replace the kingdom of darkness that had been here all through the Old Testament. You see, the people in the Old Testament, we have a kingdom in heaven. They had faith in God only. Hello? Trust in God, you'll be saved. No trust in God, you'll be damned. It's just simple. Why? Why, Pastor Kerry? Because the Messiah hadn't come yet. So they believed in God's future Messiah, and God put them on the, you're going to go list. Could you say amen? All right. So let's go on to this. So with it came all of the spiritual power and authority, all the spiritual equipment and gifts. Did you know you have equipment and gifts? Yeah, you do. We'll get to that later on in this series. We are to come to Jesus, present ourselves as a living sacrifice. He then adjusts us, matures us little by little, teaching us his ways. Now, these principles within the kingdom operate only by the spirit, not by our flesh. 
only by our spirit, by in the spirit, and of out of, and here's why. I want to make sure you get this. The reason everything, God is the spirit and he does everything in the spirit realm, who can't go in the spirit? The devil. Now he makes it sound like he can, he's a spiritual person, but he can't go into anything spiritual. That's why he's always drawing us up into our problems, always getting us caught up in the world and all the issues and everything so that you can't walk in the spirit because when you walk in the spirit, he is cut out of it. So we go back and forth, back and forth. Jesus talked about in John 10, come in and out. We come in and out. We phase in and out of, of that realm. So to minimize that in our walk, we present ourselves before God. Can you say amen? And doing that, he adjusts us so we stay in more than we go out. Amen. Amen. Do you know what it's like out there by yourself? Not good. <laughs> amen. I think we all do. We haven't even got to the, the paragraph yet. Oh, let me finish this. This is kind of neat some reading from this, okay? So we are to come to Jesus presenting ourselves a living sacrifice. He adjusts, matures us, teaching us his ways little by little. The principles within the kingdom operate only in the spirit and are only reached so they're kept out of Satan's hindrance. The definition, now this is always Old Testament and New, the definition of kingdom is this, dominion, power, jurisdiction, and influence. This is God's dominion, God's power, God's jurisdiction, and influence. Now, you and I contain the kingdom. Can you say amen? We are surrounded by the kingdom. It came at Pentecost. So the air that we breathe has God in it. The difference is only the people that have Jesus can receive and sift in the air that they breathe the presence. So the moment they start calling on Jesus and worshiping Jesus, the presence collects around them like dew, and we can feel God in the presence. In other words, we have something in us called a believer, and it just draws. It's designed. God put it in there. It draws things. Hey, listen. So if you're not in God, listen, this is funny. If we're not born again in God, it will draw things. <laughs> Some of the stuff we don't want. You can draw a wrong husband, a wrong wife, wrong friends. We, people hang around us and we just say, oh my gosh, birds of a feather do crow together. Wah! You see what I mean? So we, because God put this in us, we're meant, it's meant to draw God, to be with God. But because we got devastated in Adam, it draws all kinds of things. So therefore, God, we have to come to Christ, submit ourselves to Christ, so he can help the believer in us automatically draw the good, sift out the bad. Can you say amen? So we're walking around in the kingdom of God. Say amen. It's invisible. You can't see it. But in it has everything that pertains to godliness and righteousness, life itself. We have to learn to stay within that realm, how to soak in it, how to bathe in it, and live and move and have our being in it. Now, that's going to take the Holy Spirit teaching us. Say amen. amen. This is why Satan comes in, when, comes in with religion. What's religion? Religion is a placebo. It's when the doctor gives you something, says it is, but it isn't, looks like it. Religion is not a good thing. Religious people cry, crucify him. So I know we use it generally. I'm not putting down those, but you're really not a religious person. You have a mind and purpose for your belief. So religious people are the practice of something that makes them feel good. I can be a religious golfer. Hello? We have habits and good things. Those are okay. That's all right. But if we become religious with God, what do we offer him? Works. Now, how does God feel about the works we offer him? He doesn't like the Cain part. See, you're two people. You're an Abel and Cain. You Cain, but you could be Abel. Hello. So your spirit man, your spirit man, your inner man, your, that's your Abel. And your Cain got, it, it's your flesh. How many know, don't just listen again, I have to teach in series. Your body is not going to go to heaven. It's got to be changed. 
So when we offer God our works only, God doesn't, he can't receive them. Because it's a work of, hey, I'm pretty cool. Look at my own work. You know how that goes. We don't have to emphasize that. That's religion. Because there's some wonderful religions out there. Have you ever been to India? Look at those temples. The devil did that under the guides of come worship me people. And boy, that's pretty impressive some of that stuff they did. But remember, these are fallen angels that did this. That's another story for lunch. All right, you ready? Let's go get into this. Turn around and read our paragraph. Mark 4, I want you to notice the word picture, okay? So when we read the Bible, it paints pictures. You and I, whether we really thought about it or not, we see in pictures. Jesus taught in pictures. Say amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so verse 30, Mark 4. Then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what shall we, the parable, shall we picture it? How shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, very teeny, which, when it's sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs, herbs for healing, and shoots forth large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. All right. Now, the mustard seed, you guys know this, is who? Jesus. Remember? Now, you got to get the picture. Remember, Adam gave this planet to the who? He gave him to the devil. Yeah. And even when in the temptation of Jesus and he's confronting Jesus, he says, look, all these kingdoms I will give you, Jesus, you fall down and worship me because they were delivered to me. Read it, read it. Get really in there and study. Don't assume you know because the devil's a master at twisting heads off. Okay? So the earth was delivered. So Jesus had to get into Satan's kingdom, come into the illegal and be born here in order to take our sins, die and become the last sacrifice to set up a covenant and operate into a kingdom that's in the spirit out of the reach of Satan's hindrances and power. You know, he's done that. Can you say amen? Now, you and I stop being religious and learn to walk in the kingdom by the spirit of God with authority and power. Remember, the Jews came to him, his disciples, oh, master, at this time, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And God says, not for you to know the days or the seasons, which the fathers kept in his own power, but instead seek after the power of God, but you shall receive power after the... In other words, don't put it on the natural things that are coming on the earth. Put your eyes above. So the second thing God said to us was not only first thing, slow down. Second thing, look up. Hello, look up. Why do we look up? Because our eyes are picture makers. If you just look at the problem all the time, are you going to see the answer? If you look at society and all that needs to be changed, are you going to have a lot of faith? No, Jesus said to look up. Look up from whence cometh our help. So the second thing he said to us was we need to start looking up and start, stop looking around. Stop modeling your walk over the likes of some wonderful Christian on TV. Stop idolizing. That's okay. We have people that kind of inspire us. I hope I do sometime. But, but, but not to be following like there's some prophet. God doesn't want us to shake. Now listen. God does not want us chasing after a word. He wants us digging into the word first. And if you get a word or you go somewhere and the word comes forth, wonderful. But if you start chasing the word, Satan will get a hold of that and he'll lead you on a goose chase. And you'll never quite get your ministry and your life done. You'll be so caught up in everything else, you can't even study or pray. Uh, someone say, oh, me. All right, so to make my little thing come back on, just close the lid and open it again. All right, okay. So let's go on. We're going to cover these four areas, if you're taking notes. How to receive the Word of God. Did you know there's a way to receive the Word of God and there's a way not to? Two, God's heavenly downloads. We're going to talk about how God downloads His revelation to you. 
Thirdly, how God builds up a spiritual house. Did you know you're a lively stone? Not an old brick? Say amen. You're a lively stone. That means you're living. You're alive in God. All right? And then fourthly, we bring God's kingdom forth. I mean, it's here, but we bring the power of that kingdom forth. Hello? Now, the Bible says in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. And your sons and your daughters, you know, they will prophesy. Your young men shall see, uh, dream, uh, have visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Ladies, that includes us too. You too. It's not us, but you too. Doesn't leave anybody out. So in other words, God wants to pour out a lot of stuff to us. But you know what the enemy's got? He's got Christians running around and dealing with their problems all the time. Well, I, you know, I wish these problems would stop so I could be with God. He's tricked you, and you're deceived. Those problems are never going to stop, but the way to get a handle on them was go to God and get his wisdom. Get the wisdom for the entire day of what to do, how to pray. Then you put things in order. Did you know that there's a hedge about all of us? Did you know that? When we were born, God gave that hedge, but when we got to the age of knowing right from wrong, we ripped that hedge down. Then we get born again. And then God puts that hedge around us. And that's that time where you could do nothing wrong. You're just happy to be alive and saved. Remember those days? Amen. And then bit by bit by, we get to hack in the inside of our hedge. And we begin to tear it down. That's our protection. So we need to stay within our, our hedge of protection so that we don't rip down from the inside. Because Satan cannot get to you through that hedge. For us to even think that the enemy can get through the protection of God means that we have a missing brick somewhere in our understanding that we are completely provided for. Hello? And we know the devil can't be in the spirit and you and I can dwell there. Hello? Think about this. Is God light? In him is no what? So guess what? The Bible says that if God lives in you, that you are light. So you need to let his light out and stop projecting yourself and what you can do. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do in you? What do you want to do through me? And all of a sudden the light starts projecting out and Satan runs. He loves to make us feel important and fleshy and spiritual. Now, I'm not putting anybody down. This is just tricks he's run on me. You're spiritual, brother, only because who lives in us? Anyway, the idea is you're light. And light rips Satan's darkness apart. So, all right, you ready? First point, how to receive the word of God. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 and 2, okay? So when you see the word babes, it means innocent and pure. It doesn't mean little baby idiots are always getting their hands in a mess, Okay. <laughs> It means in the innocent state. So you can be encouraged, okay? I want to always stay in that state because you learn easier, okay? So it's therefore lay aside all malice. Do you know what malice is? Get even, getting even, be malicious. Look at the church today. They're always picking on one another. That's maliciousness. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, be real, hypocrisy, envy, don't envy anybody, and all evil speaking. Everyone say amen. amen. Okay, you know now, to you lay it aside. And let us, and as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may what? So if you haven't melos and you're letting yourself be caught up in that, because people do, you're never going to learn a thing because you're always caught up in something. That's a trap. You get with God, get the peace of God, get the rest of God, and begin to worship God, God will start downloading his stuff to you. He'll bypass the enemy, the confusion, and download it. Say amen. That's the anointing to know inside of us, 1 John 2, 20 and 27. Now listen, we go on. But if we don't put those things aside, the old man aside, then we will not be able to desire milk because we'll be so busy, we won't be able to drink at times. So well, let's go on past that. Now go with me to James chapter 1, look at verse 21. 
Because we're to be as children desiring the pure milk of the word, that we may grow therefore, therefore, in verse 21, lay aside filthiness, overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness. In other words, being teachable, approachable. Let God teach you. I mean, I talk to people and they keep telling me, they know, they know, they don't. And yet their whole life's falling apart. They don't know anything. Don't let them tell you that. And don't argue with them either. That's also a trap. Smile at them and say, do you? All right, then. Let's move on. And says, and receive with meekness to be able to learn and receive. You know what? I crave sitting around people who know more about the Bible than I do just to have them download and share with me things I might know. Or, and you've been blessed last week when we had one of our sisters here sharing the word to the, the, the nation in Israel. That was great. And if you haven't heard that, listen to that. Okay. So therefore, lay aside filthiness, overflow of wickedness, receive with meekness the implanted or engrafted word which is able to save your what? Now, your soul is different than your spirit. Your soul is here. Your spirit's in here. So you are a spirit being. You have a soul. You live in a nurse suit, your body. So your soul is your personality, your mind, your will, your appetites, those things, that your drives, and your intellect. Hello? That's you, your personality. So when God thought of you in the very beginning as your spirit, don't gave you his spirit, he downloaded a program that's your soul. And the soul and the spirit came directly from heaven right into the, the embryo of the pregnant mother. And, and they have a baby that comes from heaven, even born in the, a sinful body. Now that body's dead until they get old enough for it to resurrect itself. We call it the age of accountability. Then a child has to be born again so the flesh can be subdued. Otherwise, some of them, some of the children can be very mischievous, as you well know. Let's move right along. Church, we must desire to understand the word of God. Say amen. To sit down with God and let God download and teach us. The Holy Spirit and then before we get into the word, we need to pray. Holy Spirit, open my eyes so when I see your word, you'll speak to me through it. Hello? You want it to come as God reveals it to you and not just read over it. It's reading over the word's good. Not bad at all. But reading over the word comes to your intellect. You're a spirit being first. Your intellect comes later. So how do you do that? You say, Father, help me to understand the word. Holy Spirit, download my revelation of understanding your word. And then when you start reading it, things start coming alive off the page. Make sure you do that every time you open the Holy Bible and let God speak. Otherwise, it's just going to be words sometimes because your intellect is not all that. Come on, mine's not. So trust not in your own understanding, right? Trust in the Lord, not your own. Un Amen. Okay, so, and let's go on. So, as we pray, the word opens up, and we see a better look of how God meant it to mean to us. You know, there's a lot of people get some pretty weird stuff out of the word, but they're not, not letting the Holy Spirit teach them. Hello? They're assuming. We're not to guess about our walk. We're not to assume this is the true. You notice when I preach... I don't go, this is one opinion, this is two opinions. How about you choose which one is what? That's how the people did in the Jewish time. They got together, got in the synagogue, and then they argued the word for hours. Then they had lunch. Hello, I've been to Israel. The reason why there's so much contention with the Jewish people is they're very stubborn. Remember what God said. Now, I love them. We bless them. But... People within ourselves, we can be very stubborn. Can you say amen? We can miss God because we refuse, because we think we know. Make sure of that is not so. Always be a baby when you read the word. Be a young child, innocent. God, I know nothing. Teach me. Let it open up to you by the Spirit. Say amen. Thirdly, the word and the Holy Spirit work together to give us spiritual understanding. I call this revelational downloads. You get revelation, comes right up to you. Satan can't get his hands on it. He doesn't hear. 
Hello. You see, God set all that up for our protection. Come on, we're the children of God. Hey, kids, go out and play, play on the freeway. See, that's how it, God has been taught. And then if you make it through, then you're really being led. And, oh, don't grieve God because then he's going to punish you and all that. You heard stuff like that? That's of the devil. We call that religion. That's of the devil because you mix good with bad and no one can find the point. Say, oh, me, everyone. The church is stuck in that. They're always running around looking at physical things and arguing over who's right or who's wrong when we should be in the word, should be in prayer, and should be winning souls and getting our eyes off everybody else like the Bible simply says. Hello? Love your neighbor. Don't pick on them. Amen. Someone smile up on me. All you crowds here. All right. Let's go to verse four or point four. God reveals all his truths by his spirit and out of the sight of the ears of the enemy. When we receive the word this way, it drops directly into our spirit man and everyone say good ground. You see, in your spirit dwells God. Hello. You see, in your spirit man, God lives. So there isn't any evil in your spirit. It's from the old renewed, unrenewed mind and your flesh. It comes all the evil. Okay, so you, if you walk by the spirit man and you get in tune, this will never cause you to sin. In fact, it will keep you from sinning. The problem is we don't develop here. We develop too much here and in our flesh. And so God wants us to reverse it and let us become transformed. Say amen. How? By the renewing of our mind. So we don't get in the way all the time. Say or me. So Jesus said it this way. He said, we are to be careful for what and how we hear. Hello, do you believe that? Yeah. So let me show you a simple thing Satan does with the word. The Bible says, he that ear has ears, Jesus said, he that had ears, let him what? Yeah. Okay, so you have two ears. One set, it's the outer set, and one set, and one set's the inner set. When Jesus said, them with ears, let them hear, he wasn't talking about Hey, 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 are you listening? No, he says, do you have spiritual ears to hear what I'm saying? Hello? And you do. And besides, who lives in you now? So you have his spiritual ears. So when you come to church, ready yourself to hear what the Spirit is going to say to you. So your personal walk takes on the rich and the fullness of what God wants for you to do. Get yourself dedicated to a work that you know is a good standard, not in bondage to it, but into a work and a man or a woman of God that help can disciple you and work out the, the, the pros and cons in our lives. Teachers are important so that we don't stumble through life. We actually can learn before we step in the mess. Say amen. I know my dad used to tell me, when there's a dog in the yard, don't go running through it. Come on, laugh at me. Moving right along. So, he says, be careful how you hear and what you hear. Okay, I'm going to say this to you. Be careful of what ear you use when you hear. Because did you know when you read something, you also hear it? Did you know that when your eyes are reading the page, you can hear it in your mind, read to you almost? But that's the outer ear. And that's okay. Please don't think there's a right and wrong here. There's a better and not so good. There's an okay and there's a better. Can you say amen? So I'm showing you the better. So you pray a little bit and you say, Holy Spirit, let me enter with my heart. And as you do, boom, as you're reading along, some things will just almost come off the page. That's the Holy Spirit highlighting to you. And that's the way you really want to learn, not just, it's good to read the Bible. It's good to have the Bible read to you. It's good to hear me preach and teach. All those things are wonderful. But when you come to a place where God is being taught, where the word is being brought forth, bring your spirit man, 
Shut your outer man off as much as you can because it's just going to fling out. Your brain's going to go journeys. So you kind of shut it down. Laura, I shut my mind down and open up my spirit just to suck the word and what you want to say to me out of it. If you'll pray that out loud and you'll set yourself to that, you watch what the Holy Spirit will do. You'll have a time. You'll have a time in the word. And you, oh, but see, we don't do that. We just kind of be creatures that we're learning to do. Say amen. All right. I, I think we got here on this. Okay. So the last point, we hear and we do. That's the key. But Satan's got everybody hearing and picking on faults. You got people hearing and their eyes are going, oh, gosh, I got this situation. I got that. So they're so cumbered. Now, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not picking on. I'm talking about light. Be not entangled in the light. Why? It's a trap. Every bit of the life you see, there's good and bad, but there's a multitude of infreded traps, emotional and stuff that are there. And without the Holy Spirit helping us, we can step into those things. Let me, let me say it this way. How many here stepped into trap that I've done this again? But don't, don't raise your hand. Because that's the flesh, the patterns that need to be washed off. Now remember, every temptation that Satan runs on us, every one, is from our past. He doesn't know our future. Only God holds the future. That's why we seek him for him laying out our future. Satan can't get there. It's in the spirit. See, he wants to tell you. That's why people are going to seek new age and tarot cards and all that. They want to know their future. Only God has it. You have to come to God for your future. The devil knows your past. He helped run it. So all temptation is a See if I can say it right. Algorithm running of your past. He runs the scenarios of your past over and over and over, hoping you're going to jump to. And the only reason we jump to some of them is because we're feeling sorry for ourselves and our eyes have flipped off of God down on us. Third thing God told us is this. Take your eyes off the world system, off of other people and their advice. And thirdly, off of yourself, because you can really get in trouble, put them on me. Say amen. amen. Now, most people say, well, that's what I'm doing, Pastor Kerry. Yes. I went to open the thing and it turned off. Let me turn it on again. I'll learn all about this in a minute. Okay, here we go. My second point. God's Heavenly downloads. Let's just give you a couple of scriptures. Here's a good one. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. See, we should be focusing in the preaching of Jesus Christ. Not on Jewish teachings, not on this, this, this. Those are all take up our time. They're good and they're blessed. But what does God want for you to study? What is God saying to you to do? These are distractions too, you know. Oh, it's always fun to go to a circus. We'll leave it at there. And he says... According to my gospel and preaching of Jesus Christ, according to, listen, the revelation, God downloading it into your spirit and up to your understanding of the mystery, the hidden teachings kept secret since the world began. The word mystery, I'll take the mystery out of it. It just simply means a teaching that's been hidden from somebody. Now, God hides his teachings from Satan. Because had the princes of this world known, they would have never crucified Jesus. See, he hid it. Hello. And yet he denounced it and then he hid it. Well, Satan hides things too. Hello. He hides truth from us. And if we don't seek God after it, we'll never see the riches. Some of you might be inventors. Some of you might be preachers and teachers. You'll never know if you don't get your eyes off all the other distractions and go in and seek God like he said and let him sit down with you and open up your life and my life, all of our lives. Can you say amen? amen. That's the God who lives in us. That's the God we serve and love. Amen. Galatians, go with me, chapter 1. Listen to what Paul says in verse 1 and 2. Galatians 1, verse 1 and 2. He says, but I make it known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me was not according to man, 
nor neither received it from man, nor was taught it by it. But it came through what? Downloads. It came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, here's how you understand. I believe in a triune God, the Godhead. The Father who always is, always was, always be. He's ahead of everything, through everything, and above everything. There's the Word which became flesh. Now he's the begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. Those three are one in unity. They run the kingdom. Everything else that's created, say everything else that's created was a copy of God. God made it of himself. So you see the angels running around saying, no, no, God's just one of us. You know, there are people teaching that the devil and Jesus are brothers. No, Jesus created the angel, Satan, Lucifer, before he fell. Everything was good. Everything was good. And then Lucifer got selfish and broke off. Hello? And became evil. Satan is the author of all sin. Everyone say sin. Now, I love to say this. Do you remember, everyone, those coming in by camera? There's quite a few of you. Do you remember what sin is? What is sin? Some will say, uh, it's missing the mark. Some will say, it's choosing, making the wrong choices. How many say amen to that? That's right. But what sin really is that we forget, it's the nature of Satan himself. That when they ate from the tree, it got into our flesh, and this is why our body can't go or our flesh can't go. So if we walk by that, we're oozing a curse and not knowing it. So we present ourselves to God so we can get a heavenly spiritual bath. Can you say amen? And that curse doesn't project. Now, I'm sorry Adam gave that to us. But for us to ignore that doesn't exist. For him to say, I have no sin, he's a liar. The truth not in him. First John. Okay? So you need to understand that this body is your servant, not your master. Satan needs it to become God. The flesh of you, your selfish will needs to be in control. Can, then he can work as like a puppet. All right, one says, I'm getting it. So I wasn't given by, taught by God. Excuse me, I wasn't taught by man or any group of men. I didn't go to Bible college. I don't operate out of my head or intellect. I operate, and it was downloaded to me by the Spirit. Same way it's downloaded to you. Because the very truths that you practice today are the ones that were revealed to you. You just didn't read them. That's good. You knew about them. But when they're downloaded and they become a reality, exactly, they're planted in your spirit. They're there. Satan can't take those. That's why you need to learn by the revelation of the spirit. How God teaches how to do that. And hang around, I'll teach you. It's not that hard. How could you say that? That's my job. My job is to equip you for the work of the ministry. Amen. To help you, not control you. I don't want to control you. Good God, I have a hard enough time controlling my flesh. That's why I turn it over to God and let him control it. All right, are you ready? A couple of points. God speaks to his children through his word mainly. And by revelation of the Spirit of God, bypassing the enemy's abilities to hinder them. Hello? We have to walk in the Spirit. Then we're out of his reach as well. Do you think the devil got his hands on Jesus? Follow his life. No, he learned to walk with his father in the Spirit. Now, folks, remember, he came as a man. He walked under the priesthood. So he had to do it like a man would do it by the Spirit, by the walk of faith. So he followed those guys. You know why he was so good at that? He could have made, how many know that Jesus could have made a mistake? He didn't. See, we always put him as, he's Jesus, he would never make. Come on. He said, in all points, tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was tempted. Why? He could make a mistake. But anyway, he's perfect. Can you say amen? He lives in our heart now. And if we let him run our life, he'll keep us from making too many mistakes. And if we slow down, pay close attention. Remember, God's never in a hurry. He runs about three miles an hour. Walking speed. Why? Because he's way ahead and way behind and right there with you. 
we need to sit down, settle down, trust God, and let God bring us up into him the way he wants us to grow. Say amen. Say, I'm a branch. I'm supposed to bear fruit. All right, second point. Church, just reading the word is wonderful, but it's revealed by the Spirit. Pray first. We need to come to him, and God needs to insert his word down into us like the parable of the sower. We need to be the good ground. Can you say amen? Thirdly, the rock in which we stand is built by hearing the word and doing the word. By hearing the word and by doing the word. And it grows. Your foundation grows up underneath your, your feet because his name is Jesus. You hear and you do. You hear and you do. When you start off, you hear and know very little, so you do very little. Okay? And as you grow and as you grow, pretty soon it's no longer an effort, but a flow in the Spirit. Say amen. And it's hearing and doing is how we develop in the character of God. You see, I don't grow spiritually by trying to live the word in faith. No, I grow in my character of obedience and non-obedience, but I grow spiritually in the presence of God. Hello, under the sun and the nutrients of God. Hello. So you don't grow physically, make yourself grow up. No, you present yourself physically and God grows you up from the inside. Say amen. And remember, some of us still have the old shell hanging around. We need to have God rip that old shell off. So there's a new man, the new lady. Can you say amen? And then fourthly, church, the devil is locked out of the spiritual realm. He cannot even go there. That's why he's waiting for us to leak it out of our mouth. The devil, not only is locked out, but that is why God gives it to us by the Spirit, by revelation. So Satan can't hear what God is telling you. Remember, listen to this. This is Colossians. Write this down. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. If you being dead with Christ, you're seated at the right hand. Set your mind on things above. In other words, let God lift your thinking. You're, you're dwelling on things above. Why? Because the world's polluted. So he can talk with us. If we're not dwelling and thinking about him, he can't talk to us because everything else is praying for our attention. Lift up, he says, for you are dead, your life. Now he says, for you died. So this is the flesh. You have to die daily. You have died. Your life is hidden. Now here's that word again. Hidden. Hidden from who? Our life is hidden from who? Satan. For you are dead, your life is hidden in Christ. In God. Now think about that. I believe the word just the way it's written. Literally, when we're in the spirit, Satan cannot see you. He sees Jesus. You're standing in him. But you've got to know that. Otherwise, we're going to open our big mouth and we're going to let them, it's me, it's me, it's me. Come and get me, 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 me. So we have to learn to walk within the veil of the glory of God's presence. And we can. You're in the right place to learn that. Walk by the Spirit, enjoy the fruits, and see many souls change because your life is the way Satan wants you to be. Someone say, oh, all right. I love that kind of thing. There's got to be a way to, besides closing the lid on this. All right. I, I do speak a lot. Maybe that's a reminder. Okay. Go with me to Luke chapter 6. Let's, let's look at this real quick. Verse 46 through 48. This is the problem. Many people honor the Lord. Now, I'm not picking on anybody. It's easy to say, Lord, I'm going to do something and then not do it. That means we have too many distractions in our seriousness. So listen, before you make a major decision that's going to affect you, maybe your family, your walk, please pray about every decision so you get God's wisdom on us. Amen. Because Satan makes things look good too or can get us out of timing. Some would say, I want to rather be on time than out of time. You know, just think about that for a minute. And he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, verse 46, and do not the things I say? And then he says how important it is. It says, whoever comes to me, everyone say, come to him. The Greek says, 
Come daily to him. So this is the thing what we don't get. God's got me. I know. I'm, I'm okay. No, he says, come daily to him. Why? Because he tunes us. We can get out of tune in our dreams. You come daily to him, present yourself, not like he doesn't know who you are, so that he can come and refresh and retune. With, listen, if you will do that, half of your problems will begin to die away. Hello, I guarantee it. And then in two weeks after doing that every day, come back to me and tell me the wonderful testimonies that are going on in your life. I mean, I've heard hundreds of them already. And yet they were wonderful Christians. They loved God, but they lacked the important principles of practice that makes our life rich in God. Say amen. So we're to be doers of the word and what? Not hearers only. For he who comes to me and hear my sayings and does them, I'll show you on whom he's like. I like this term. He's like a wise man. And then you can read the rest of this. All right, my next point is God builds you up into a spiritual house. So you're under construction, say amen. Church becomes a hospital for the spiritual people that are under construction. So that's what the devil does. Take your eyes off of people who come to church. Don't idolize them. Don't, don't go, ooh, or don't look, why are they that way? You shouldn't be looking at people. That's a distraction. Lift your eyes and say, gosh, my eyes have been dripping down, Lord. Just talk with yourself before the Lord. Hello? Remember Elijah? And he had a little, little servant called Gehazi. And he was always running by his eyes and his ears, not by faith. And man, Gehazi said, we're in trouble, we're in trouble. And God says, or Elijah says, God, open up his eyes that he may see there are more with us than there are with them. See, the reason why we see so much devil working right now, because our eyes are on the wrong place. And number two, because he's aggressive. God is passive, then aggressive. Let me show you. He's passive because he has to be asked to get involved. He doesn't get involved. If you don't ask him to get involved with your family, he's standing there watching and waiting for you. Once you get him involved, he becomes aggressive. Say amen. Amen. He's not pushy. He doesn't shove you down and get you saved. You see what I mean? But the devil will do everything he can to keep you from getting to know your God, hoping that he's going to turn you and make you hate God. No, we're built up a spiritual house. And now, Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, come to me. The Greek says, come and keep on coming. All you will labor and heavy laden. Why are we heavy? Because we're doing a lot of things ourselves. And I will give you what? Rest. That means I will give you in such a state that you'll be at rest, not at turmoil. In other words, I'm going to show you how to fight because the battle is won, how you can launch missiles rather than get in the fight and duke it out. Too many Christians are in the fight duking it out and God asks you, please step back. And because you're there and you're doing this and you're yelling and rebuking, you're in the way. Step back and say, God, I speak your word. You see my family, so-and-so, he's not doing too good. You see this person, my uncle, he's not, you know, whatever. I put them on their altar. I claim their salvation, place them in your hands. All the demons that are active in their life, I bind them up. I take them, I put them behind the curtain where they belong, and I bind them behind that curtain, forbidding them to ever return. Now I release their angels who sent forth the minister to them, their and their salvation. Now, as them being in your hands and the angels are ministering, bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Write it all down, stick them somewhere in an envelope or on the fridge, and leave it alone. Stop talking about them. Start saying, because then you'll bring the devil back into the situation because you're being unwise, knowing what the will of the Lord is. Someone say, oh, me. That's true, but I'm teaching you what to do. So we come to Jesus all the time. He teaches us how to rest. Then he says, and take my yoke, belt yourself, seat belt yourself in upon you and learn from me, not about me, from me. That means you have to be spirit to spirit taught. For I am gentle 
When God downloads, it's gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find what? Rest. Now look, where do we find the rest? In the soul. This is where the torment comes. This is where Satan comes the most in your head. Hello? And you'll find rest if you keep coming to God, casting your cares, and stop carrying the burdens around. Hello? You're not designed to carry the burdens up, but to give them to God. Say amen. And then leave them there, including our children and so. He says, you will find rest to your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is what? How many times have you heard a Christian say, I can't stand it, I'm on so much burden. God is allowing me to suffer this. Would you sit on them and, and take a two-day seminar and teach them the word of God? These people are duped. Hello. They mean well. How many know you can be very sincere? But the cry of your heart, God doesn't answer the cry of our heart. He answers the cry of our heart according to the word. If that was so, I mean, everybody had, had a baby fit, God be answering. <laughs> He's talking about the cry of our heart for God, our longing for God. Remember the believer you have inside you? I'm making it, at it instead of God. But the believer inside of you attracts things. So if you're running around with your lip down and blue, you're going to attract other people like that. And you're going to sit around and talk and blue, blue, blue. And the devil goes, gotcha, sucker, you're it. You know, the devil plays tag. And we're not smarter than him, but God is. That's why we have to walk in the spirit. All right, moving right along, say amen. All right, so we have to come to Jesus. Now go with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at this one, verse 4 and 5. We, Jesus said, come to me, right? In 1 Peter 2, verse 4, coming to him as a lively stone, say amen. Redicted of men, but chosen by God and precious. How many know Jesus is precious? He's our model. We're supposed to be focusing on him, modeling our life after him. Not after Pastor Kerry, God forbid. Stop looking at Joel Olstein. What a wonderful man. I happen to know, know his father. People are picking on stuff. That's Satan's trick to curse the body of Christ. Because if you can't touch God's property, even if somebody's doing wrong and they still belong to God because God never leaves them, don't touch what belongs to God unless you get a curse. Pay attention, Christian. Our, our church is suffering so bad. It's self-affliction. They're running around a bunch of scabs. They're always talking about somebody and everything instead of getting souls saved. Come on. Winning souls, building churches, starting Bible studies like we're supposed to. Oh, we're too sidetracked. And now we all go to the mega church because we don't have to do anything. Now, I'm not against mega churches because, hey, I was a part of Fiala Poor Square. I helped them get large. But when God called me away, he didn't put them down. But there's a time for a mega church and there's a time for the little churches. Everything has a purpose under heaven. The problem is we're always comparing. Don't compare. You can come here and get a good word every Sunday. The worship's are powerful. You can get healed here. Why? Because we put Jesus in control of this house. I don't want to run it. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with my wife, enjoying what God's doing, aren't we, honey? All right, let's finish with you. So you got it. Look, he says, look, coming to me as a lively stone rejected indeed by man, chosen by God and precious. You also, as lively stones, are being under construction, being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. See, our job, we can connect with God to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. See, we come through Christ. Oh, Lord, I bring myself. God says, no, no, I got enough of you. I need you to bring you. I'm just joking. We, we come through Jesus. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus. Never forget that. Are you still with me? Yeah. All right, a couple of points. Number one, church, we are to come to Christ daily, present ourselves to him. 
He preps us for the day, opens us up to learn by revelation the very ways and how to do things. Say amen. Two, we want to spend enough time with him for us to become restful. Why? No one can learn when they're all upset. That's why the house of God, don't bring your problems here. It's not a laundry mat. Leave them, let, you know, talk. Let's get them fixed. But don't bring them here to the house of worship and throw them on everybody's lap. That's where the church has been for the last 20 years. A lot of it. It's sad. We want us to get above that. Now, I'm including myself. I'm part of the church. Okay, now listen. Point three, believers, let us be a doer of the word. Why? Because that's how we develop our character. Not just a listener or a spectator. Get in the fight and do it God's way for lost souls. We've already won. We're already set. I'm already marked. If I die tomorrow, I'm going to heaven. This world is a prison. No one leaves without Jesus in their heart. Whether they die and they later on get their body and be resurrected or they get raptured, no one ever leaves the planet except through Jesus Christ. That's why Satan has got so many religions, so many different distractions, so that a person can't get a simple walk with Christ and a full life of testimony. Say amen. Just Jesus is simple. I marvel that the church is so far removed from the simplicity that is in the gospel of Jesus Christ to another distractional gospel, which really is not the gospel. All right, goes on and goes on and goes on. Point four, God told us to slow down, focus on Jesus. He's our model. He's the cornerstone. Focus on Jesus. Focus, focus, focus. Listen, if we don't lift up our eyes and focus on him, then whatever we are dwelling on, we start to take on the effects. Let me remind you of Lot outside of Sodom and Gomorrah. He was vexed by looking at the problems of the earth. We're not supposed to be focusing on the problems. We're supposed to be focusing on God so he can equip us to bring a solution and a kingdom. Hello. And many a Christian, they're wonderful people. They're loved. They're saved. But they have no direction. They don't know how to win a soul. They can't even pray over their meal. And they're in the fight. No, we need to teach. We need to teach. We need to instruct. We need to keep pointing people to Jesus, keep encouraging them and pray and putting people before God. You know, when you pray, you're bringing people to God and you're bringing God to people. One of the greatest things you can do is intercede on the behalf of another. And then finishing, say amen. The Bible says we all, if we focus on Jesus like we're looking at him, staring at him, with an open face, we are transformed. Why? Because you're, ca you're a camera. And your eyes absorb pictures. Your ears hear, hear, hear words and then paint pictures. So Satan knows how to paint the wrong pictures. So you have to put your eyes on. You have to focus on. You have to completely concentrate, which takes you presenting yourself to God so he can tweak you in such a way that you absorb all that he wants you to know, all that he wants you to get. You're his child. Never forget, you are his child. And what father in heaven wouldn't love and move heaven and earth to see that you get his best? And he brought it at Pentecost through the kingdom of God. And we're going to be learning a little bit more about it. Go with me to James 1.25, please. I hope you wrote 2 Corinthians 3. 318 down. We're beholding in a glass the glory of God or being changed. James 125, listen to this. This is great. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, what's that? Everyone, hold up your Bible. That's the perfect law of liberty. It's not the Old Testament. Listen. I love the Old Testament. But listen, there's two contracts. How many has ever had two contracts? And you had the choice of choosing which one. I'd rather have the new one. And once I read it and figure out what it is, than the old one. Can you say amen? So we read both and we understand both. But we practice only the new. Don't practice the old. You'll fall. 
because the old had one purpose. Get this. Only one purpose to us Gentiles. You can't save yourself. You need Jesus. That's all the law said. Now, the Israelites had all kinds of calisthenics and exercises that God put them through. If you study them and start practicing them, you will frustrate the grace of God and what the gift of Jesus Christ and his salvation. And literally, that's a trick of the enemy to get you caught up in the web of practice and works. And it looks beautiful. You see them waving the flags. I love to wave flags. You see them waving the flags and no longer do they use the name of Jesus. They're talking in the name of Yahweh and all of this. And they're using the Hebrew. To, what are they doing that for? Are they Jew? Most of them are not. Why are they doing that? Because they're caught up in a false teaching. Read Galatians. All the book of Galatians is telling them, don't get caught up in our, on the history of how you got to where you are. Because we don't run from our past. You see, we don't look our past and, and regulate our presence from our past. We learn from our past. We're impressing on in faith. You see, in the Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind. So what is happening to the church? Christianity has become almost moot. The enemy's tricked a lot of people. So now they're going back into the Jewish traditions and they're starting to practice all that. It feels good. It's great. Now I'm not running it down. But it was written to the Jew. So you're practicing things that God's not required you to. And you're actually, frankly, insulting his son. Isn't Jesus and what he's done enough? I'm talking to people on the camera and for as long as they watch this video. You, when we practice something that is not the gospel, we insult the work of Jesus, not knowing. And so we're going on, we're having fun. The devil says, come on over here. Isn't this good? You're important. You're doing all this. Well, it's, man, that looks impressive. But remember, even the Jews themselves and all their glory fell short of the glory of God. So it's not a put down. It's a wise up. You don't have to go back into the Old Testament traditions and practices because it won't work. They just meant to point you to Jesus. Do you have Jesus? Yes, I have Jesus. Then why are you going back to something that points you to Jesus when you have Jesus? We have to keep the gospel simple or the devil will twist your head right off your shoulders. Look how many people are so caught up in it. Oh, I'll tell you. Oh, I don't, you know. You know, will the Jews do this? The Jews are going to do what God has the Jews do. And it's wonderful and it's beautiful when you're to pray for them. But God is more concerned about what you're going to do for him and what he's going to do for you. And if you are so caught up in everything and this and that and this, Satan just laughs at you because you're a blowhard and you don't do any of the truth. He's got us fixated on things instead of simple win people of the Lord. Do you have Jesus in your heart? Don't tell me about that. Oh, I'll pray for you. Start sharing the seed, the mustard seed. Amen. And finishing. How many times is it going to finish? All right. Okay, here we go. We bring the kingdom forth. Let me give you just a couple of scriptures. Go back to Mark 4, chapter, um, chapter 4, verse 26 through 30. And I'm just going to hit highlights. I done, I'm, I'm, the anointing's on me pretty strong, so I want to make sure I don't get ahead of myself, feeling like I have to rush through this. In Mark 4, listen to what he said. Verse 26, listen to the words carefully as they speak to us by the Spirit. And he said, the kingdom of God, as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. And should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. How many of you know God's bringing growth in your life? And you know it's amazing because you're going, wow, God, this is cool. Can you say amen? And then he says, verse 28, for the earth yields crops of itself, first the blade then the head, and after that, the full grain or the fruit of the head. Verse 29, and when the grain ripens immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. He's talking about Jesus in your heart. 
Every one of us has only a length of time to live our life, to fulfill all the things that God has set out, all good things before us. Are we going to get distracted, sit down, quit? Are we going to keep going no matter what we go through? Count it all joy when we encounter the, the opposition. That only lets us know we're heading the right way. Can you say amen? Because if the devil's for us, we're in trouble. <laughs> so we're pressing on, following God, and sometimes it feels like you're not growing at all. You just keep your consistent practice of meeting with God, letting him develop you. Doesn't matter if you feel or not feel. You're heading to God in faith, and the Spirit is downloading into your heart things you need to know. Can you say amen? Remember, you are very valuable to God. You used to be a sinner. Folks, don't get caught up, you know, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Shut up. You were a sinner. You got saved by grace. Now you're a child of God. You might be a complete boob, but you're a child of God. There's a different thing. Hello. That means God doesn't hold over you your do's and your don'ts. He encourages you when you fail. He doesn't condemn any of his children ever. If you feel that condemnation is brought on by yourself or the devil or others, but God never condemns his children. Even if they do wrong, he convicts us right from within. You start off, you're an on, on fire child of God, and then you get off in the world, and the world, the world start pressing you into their mold, and suddenly you feel you're, like you're gay or something weird. That's the devil. That's an evil spirit getting on someone. No one is ever born gay. Hello? No one. It's a demon that enters their life somewhere along through some kind of traumatic thing, impresses upon their soul, and makes them think daily that that's what they are. And then they play it out by listening to the devil. Pray for them. Say amen. amen. I have people in my family that need some help that way. It's okay. We are praying for them. Amen. Who do we have? We bring forth the kingdom. Say amen. If you don't put your foot down, you don't take authority over it, the devil's going to run right into your family. Get that salt out. The slug is coming. So he says, look, he said the kingdom of God is if a man should scatter seed. Now, it's going to grow up, and the earth yields its crop by itself, verse the blade. Now, Matthew 4, look at verse 23. On the same line, we bring forth the kingdom. Verse 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching of the kingdom of, of, of heaven, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. What's he doing? He's bringing forth the kingdom. Remember what had captured the world all this time until Jesus came, the kingdom of darkness. He's bringing forth the light. He would say, kingdom of God is from my hand to your hand. You bring it forth. You speak it forth. You pray it forth. You are, God is using you to pour out his kingdom. Now, if you know nothing, nothing's coming out. If you've been sold a bag of religion, then what comes out is not the truth some of the time. You want pure truth. How many here has ever been parched? You need some water. And somebody hands you the purest water you ever drank in your life. It almost tastes sweet and like candy because it's designed perfectly by God. Of course, we've all altered water and stuff. I've had water like that. I, I would say it was almost living. That's the kind of life God wants you to have. Drink and be refreshed. Drink and be refreshed. Don't be condemned. That's the devil. Get out of your flesh because your flesh is always a failure. If you think you can make yourself better, then how are you doing, Bunky? Not good. It takes only God in you to make us better. So you go to God. You let God have control. Don't take it back and finish him. Boy, he finishes a lot. Says, and Jesus went about healing. You have the right to heal. Did you know Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. These signs will follow them to believe. How many here believe? Now remember I told you that we have a believer in us? Your believer doesn't come from your head. Your believer doesn't come from your flesh. It comes right from the core of your spirit man. Say spirit man. 
Who lives in your spirit, man? Now God does. You're a new creation. So you have all the faith, all the power, everything you need is in your spirit, man. Yet we still offer God our intellect and our offered intellectual prayers. No, bring it out of your gut and speak the power of the kingdom. God, you said in your word, oh, I can sense you now. You see, you're speaking forth the power and the authority of God. You want to learn more? We teach all about it. We're going to start having special classes. I want to see this church grow immensely. There's a lot of good here, not because of me or anything, just because of the riches of understanding his word. Did you get something out of that this morning? Give the Lord a praise, will you?